Asalaamu Alaikum, good afternoon everyone and welcome to another karting video. Ooh, it's not Club 100, things are getting spicy. I, um, a couple of my friends were having a little karting event at Daytona Sandown Park and I was lucky enough to join them. So I thought, hey, it's a cool opportunity to get a little video in, show a bit of karting. I managed to qualify on pole, which might be a bit confusing because the title says racing from the back. Yeah, I let everyone through going into turn one because uh, it's just a bit boring being at the front, you know. That, I don't really want to be role-playing Max Verstappen. So we're going to make things a little bit more fun. I had a chat with the marshals. They were very good about this. They said I couldn't start from the back. So I had to let everyone through in a safe manner. That means that we've got to do the actual start properly. Five red lights and away we go. It's not the best of starts uh, because the driver starting in second... I think it was Teddy, um, he's like 10 or something, and he's very light, you can see him, look, he's just shot off, um, although we do kind of lift off, we go to the outside, and then I see some drivers coming wide, so I go all the way over the white line to avoid any shenanigans, and I'm waiting for these guys to come through, and then there's like an incident into turn two, and I kind of say, yeah, that's on them, some driver decides to drive in front of oncoming traffic, uh, and then there's another spin, so I decided, right, okay, from here, we now race. And the issue with the qualifying when you do these corporate events is the fact that you have no way of knowing how much you put on pole by. So for all I knew, I put it on pole by three seconds. Okay, let's be honest, not, not three seconds. Maybe by a second, or maybe it was just by a few thousandths of a second. So I have no idea how close everyone was to me pace-wise. Turns out I was a second up as well. Oh, beautiful send up the inside into the hairpin um, so yeah it turned out that I was about a second up at the end of qualifying and we're just kind of navigating through the traffic it's all very very chill um, to be honest Sandown Park ah uh, I'm not a big fan of the circuit I'll be honest like I love Daytona I love the staff there but this track wasn't it for me it's every single corner is a hairpin and I don't know it flows quite nicely it's weird because driving it I kind of enjoy putting in the laps but I think uh, if I did another session I'd kind of know the track and in these Sodi carts it'd just be too dull Milton Keynes on the other hand oh I do love me some MK now uh, we get a good run coming out of another hairpin and uh, we're going to go up the inside into you guessed it another hairpin it's one of the tighter corners and probably one of like three braking spots on the circuit even into here it's just kind of little dab on the brake otherwise you just kind of throw the cart in our fast lap of the day was a 53.3 and i'll talk you guys through that lap once we get there but i think at this point we're probably already up into the top 10 part of me was hoping that it would be absolutely chucking it down with rain just because it'd make things a bit more fun but it wasn't into this left-hander, that was one of the trickiest left-handers on the circuit because, again, you don't brake, you don't quite lift, you can't quite get flat, and I think this is the corner that everyone really struggled with. I eventually figured it out. You just take all of the curb. You don't really want to take the curb through that right hand of the apex. It's a little bit weird, but now we're getting our heads down. We're trying to catch up to the field in front of me, and, okay, anyone watching this, when you spin... Do not start going when there's a cart coming through. It's, yeah, you can literally see a cart coming and you get going because he thought I was going to go on the other side. Don't wait until you know. We get a 53.5 this lap, which is actually probably my second quickest lap time of the day. So kind of late on the brakes into this corner and you don't have to pull the cart all the way. Actually, yeah, you do need to pull the cart all the way to the right so you can get a nice flowing run through the left-hander onto this effectively a back straight and then this left-hander loads of people turn in really early but you can turn in so late use up all of the curb and just just send it through i don't really know how else to describe it again too much curb through the right hander that probably costs a bit of time because it makes the car essentially judder along the track so you end up losing grip and into here again just open up the car you can take this left-hander flat even if you know you aren't taking the racing line in yellow flag through this corner which means we can't let the car all the way out so that's another 10 gone and now we're catching up to this battle up ahead i think one of these guys is techno vin um is it maybe not 
Um, they've all got white gloves. Technovin has red gloves. My, my old racing gloves, essentially. And I think this could potentially be my brother? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Either way, we're coming up through the field. We're finding positions. And the issue with this circuit is because there aren't many hard braking zones, it's really tough to overtake. And yeah, if, if people aren't going on the brakes, you can't overtake as easily as we do our little, you know, slide the bomb forward, get a bit more air resistance. I'm probably weighing about 76 kilos with the full karting gear. We do the bum shuffle as we go through the left-hander uh, as well. I don't know what to call that. It's, uh, you know, the, the aerodynamic route. And again, this is another quick lap, 53.4. So now that we've got some clean air, we put in a very quick lap time, which would have been pretty much the fastest lap of, of the session as well. Completely flat through that opening corner, onto the brakes, into this right-hander. Oh, that is, that is beautiful. Okay, that is the best I've taken turn two. We don't quite get turn three completely right and then we've got a driver in front of us we're going to try to go up the inside and we're able to come back over to the right before the corner itself and we miss a little bit of the apex so i think we've already dropped about two tenths in this lap so i think a 53 2 is is definitely doable let's see how the final couple of corners are of of the circuit we come out quite wide do i lift i think i keep the foot planted i don't know it's just weird these these sodis feel like boats. Um, I've never been a fan of, of Sodi carts. Um, from the terrible steering wheel design to... I don't know, the, it's just handles weirdly. They slide around a lot, if that makes sense. I think anyone who's done a lot of karting and has driven Sodis know what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, the steering wheel's just so odd. It's like you're in an F1 car, but you're... The steering wheel's not coming straight out at you, so the whole point of that steering wheel design doesn't doesn't really work. As there's a bit of an incident up ahead, and we go up the inside, we gain a few positions. Now this up ahead is the battle, I believe, with uh, Technovin and my brother. But again, I'm just kind of just chilling while watching this because there's nothing really too spicy battle-wise. There wasn't anyone ridiculously close to my pace, so. Yeah, I was just kind of chilling and, and watching the events unfold. To be fair to my brother, he actually did quite well. His fast lap was only like seven tenths off mine, and it was his first time in a cart really in about ten years or something. Um, and even then, he didn't race competitively before. That's uh, Technovin on our outside. We get the job done. This is my brother uh, now that I'm alongside. I'm trying to hang it around the outside, and I'll be honest. That was the point where I realized there isn't much grip on the outside, but we somehow get a much better run. I give uh, a little wave to my brother, and again, I try to hang it around the outside, but there is just no grip whatsoever. Um, and my brother very stupidly doesn't cover off the inside. That's why once you got a position, cover off the inside, otherwise um, I'm gonna send it. And that's exactly what we do. We gain a position, and then I make sure I carry as much speed as I can through the right-hander so I can't get sent. And now I can get my head down and tried to climb up through the field one of the things that i found though with sand down as i've blown my brother a kiss just to um you know add some insult is the fact that there are a lot of very smooth curbs and you can really abuse those curbs like really get your car all the way over over them like here you can get on the curb a little bit and i think this left hand you want to get on the curb as well but that time around i didn't um it's weird because if you turn less you're you know you're slowing your cart down a little bit less. This is one corner where you do want to use the curb. I don't use it as much as I should. You'll see on my fast lap that I get right up onto it. Uh, through that right-hander, don't really need to use it. And then I think through this right-hander, you probably do. Yeah. So I think that's the one thing. If, if I could go back to Sandown and, you know, try to find some extra time, that is where I would be doing it as we have the mother of all sends into the final corner. That one was actually very, very juicy. Me likey. And again, another 53.5. And all the while, I was having a look to where um, the guy who started in second, Mr. Teddy, was. And I could kind of see him. He was, a, he was a few corners up ahead. And I was just thinking, oh, no, we've only got 10 minutes left. Half the race is done. I really need to get my head down. Otherwise, I'm not going to be catching him. Again, just trying to take a nice smooth run through that left-hander. All about not dropping speed because these Sodis don't have the power to regain the speed. As the driver in front of us just outbreaks himself i think he was trying to battle with me and thought oh someone's fast is coming let me break late and uh decided to go into narnia 
so that's just how it goes sometimes again a really nice scent up the inside into the right hander and we're clear going into the left as someone has spun on the exit of pit lane i think that was another one of um of the friends from my group to be fair this is a pretty good lap considering we had to get past one person so i definitely think like a 53 one is very very possible as we catch up to another person we're going to send it up the inside on the brakes into the right hander job done and again this is why it's so so important when you do these races you have to get past the back markers as quickly as possible otherwise you'll lose so much time here i make a mistake i should have gone to the inside but i was thinking oh maybe i can go to the outside there's a bit of contact i get squeezed out and he apologized but i was stupid right i i should have known that that was going to happen that cost me a bit of time and here i'm thinking yeah we're going to send it into the right hand he goes defensive so i say i'm just going to let him mess up because i know i'm better get the run hang it around the outside through the left hand and then up the inside we go i was initially looking at the switchback but i don't know what i was thinking you can't switch back through that left hander so we should have just hung it around the outside properly and um yeah we gain another position and i think at this point we are probably in second place i want to say i think we are in second maybe it's third i could be wrong um the issue is it's kind of hard to tell who i'm racing with because everyone's got the same suit and helmet so i've got absolutely no idea maybe this guy in front of me now is the driver in second place possibly um yeah like i i have no idea i can barely see the numbers watching this video back and all i knew was that the guy in second who was in it first because uh, i let him through at the start would have been um i, I just knew what his helmet looked like and it was that multicolored kind of zapper helmet as I misjudge my run out of the final corner. Almost clip is the back end of the guy in front, so I have to back out. And um, yeah, we go up the inside and this guy just turns into me. Again, like, you can see that someone's on your inside and you turn in anyway. Like, I don't know, people's first time at karting, to be fair, some people have been more than that, but they still do silly things and that's something that you have to be aware about as a, as a more experienced driver that when you go to these karting events you're going to come across all kinds of people you know experienced drivers inexperienced drivers we go to the outside and i'm hoping that i'll be left room on the exit of this corner and of course i won't because he doesn't see me again i probably shouldn't have gone for that move but at the time i was thinking oh, i've got the momentum maybe i can make it work but not quite enough so we're going to send it up the inside into here he goes defensive so we just look for a switch back and he carries too much speed and you can see that he loses his back end on corner exit as a result and that gives us the position to be honest i'm thinking about like what kind of youtube shorts can i create from this and i think the only thing that i can really do is examples of things that you shouldn't do while karting like the guy who uh, spun and then decided to rejoin the track in front of me that's that's a no-no um, not the smartest thing that one can do again I kind of missed that apex it's that left hand is a bit of a tough corner but yeah you just need to get right up onto the curb use all of the circuit we've got a yellow flag which means that we have to sit behind which is obviously very frustrating because it means that the leader could be getting away we overtake him and again that's that's another thing where experience kicks in yellow flag ends as soon as you pass the incident so you'll have newer drivers who go at about five miles an hour as we have our fastest lap of the race so let's run through this hot lap again we do the little bum shuffle into turn one completely flat and it's about being as gentle and as smooth with the steering as we possibly can be little dab onto the brakes turn in get the cart turned and then keep it all the way over to the right so we can get a nice sweeping run through the left just straighten up the wheel at one point just so that the rear end doesn't slide and the whole cart doesn't slide losing us speed all the way over to the right nice late turn in get right over the curb straighten up the car on the power completely flat through this right hander you can hear that the cart isn't juddering through the corner which is important because if the cart judders it means you're losing time again late on the brakes into this right hander we straighten up the cart fully on the power we pull the cart over to the right a bit just to get a nice run through the left on the brakes miss the apex maybe a touch but again we get onto onto the power quite well and that is a 53.3 at the toner sandown park 
And I think I'm slowly, I could see that I was catching up to the race leader, right? And I think he's on the other side of this corner at the moment. But I knew I was running out of time. And to be honest, I knew that I didn't have enough time. I just needed to kind of rely on my experience and put in consistent quick laps, knowing that he'd be a little bit slower than me and he's more likely to make mistakes when overtaking back mark. Because that was a really nice run through, through the left hand of that time round as we catch up to this car in front. And again, I can't send it up the inside into this hairpin, so I've got, got to sit behind and just try to find a way through. And again, it's just really difficult to do it as we have someone spun. So we're going to just look for the switchback, get on the power nice and early, gain another position. And that group of cards up ahead, that is where the race leader is. And this is a 54.4. So we lose nearly a second on this lap. And I, I'm going to guess there's a back marker or a yellow flag somewhere and that costs us time because so far this lap has looked pretty good through the opening couple of corners even through that left hand I take us I still don't know if you want to take a tight line in in these sodies or a wider line again this is also my first time at Daytona Sandown Park so I'm still learning the circuit and I am by no means an expert here but I think a 53.3 is a pretty darn good time. We've got a yellow flag out. The yellow flag is removed, and I'm guessing this is going to be where I lose a second. We carry speed. We've got to go on the brakes because of this car in front of me. And, yeah, that's that's going to be about a second as we go up the inside into the final corner to um, continue our climb up the field. Now, this is where I take the lead because there's a yellow flag up ahead, and the yellow flag then gets removed. The race leader doesn't realize that he's on the inside, so I just go around the outside of him. I go around the outside of another cart, inside of another cart, and then we've got two more. We're gonna hang it around the outside of this next cart. And this is what, four positions we've gained in a couple of corners. We get a good run. This guy just moves over to the other side of the circuit because he's meandering around, not knowing what he's doing like someone on the, on the road. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to be that rude, but yeah, that's kind of what he was doing. And then we switch over to the inside, get another position, and we take about, five carts in one corner and that's another thing um, so that car that went back over to the outside some people might be thinking oh he didn't do much wrong right he just went over to the racing line if you're going to have a bad exit if you're going to lose your rear end you need to be aware of what's happening around you and if you're like slower you can't just move across the track expecting that no one's around and that no one's got a better run than you now we have the race leader right behind us because he weighs about 20 kilos less than us and he is coming like an absolute rocket. So I need to break away because I couldn't see how long was left in the race and I was getting really nervous at this point. And again, I can see him right there. So we go over to the inside, he goes to the outside and I just know as long as I stay on the inside, I can hold on to this. And for all I knew, this was the last lap or there were two laps left of the race. If there were like five, six minutes, I probably would have let him through and then tried to overtake him properly. But he gets a good run coming out of the right-hander. He's on our inside, so we have to be super committed on the outside of the hairpin. We hold on to the position. He, I don't know why he doesn't hang it around the outside of that left, but we hold on to the position. We get a really nice run out of the final corner. And um, at this point, I'm just thinking, right, I need to check out as quickly as possible. I'm trying to stay in the slipstream rather than go defensive so I can gain a little bit of extra speed. And I think he was kind of there, but we send it up the inside into this right-hander. And at this point, I'm thinking, right, okay, I should have a bit of a gap to second. And yeah, just heads down at this point and try to, try to pull away. Again, I didn't know that this was lap 20 of 21. I didn't know how long was left, but I knew that we were getting quite close to the end of the race. So on to this little straight that leads into the final complex of corners. We're going to go looking for the outside, which just doesn't work. I thought the car in front was going to go a little bit slower than they actually did, but we can still go up the inside into the final corner. Job done, another position gained. And now we head on to the last lap of the race. And the last lap thing came up quite late. So if you go back, you can see exactly when it appears. And I didn't see it as we go up the inside into turn one so i didn't know this was the last lap so i expected that there was this lap and maybe one more lap or two more laps to go after um this one spinner on the exit of the corner and i had a little um heart stopping moment because i thought if he's spun and doesn't let the cart out i'm a little bit screwed but thankfully he's all the way out on the outside we get a good run through the hairpin 
And again, it's just bring it home because I knew I had a gap to second. And in the end, we ended up winning this race by one and a half seconds. You can see how far back he is. And again, it's just a little bit of experience getting through back markers. Um, and that's one thing that I've always been relatively good at in carts. Just navigating through back markers very quickly, very effectively. And even though we've had a couple of, of hairy moments, it's been relatively quite clean. As we take the checkered flag, we take the win. We get a nice little trophy as well to, to go with it. So, yeah, a good fun day at Daytona Sandown Park. Again, as I've mentioned, not a big fan of the Sodi cars, but it was good fun. Again, the, the track is... Learning the track is very fun. I'll give I'll give that to this circuit, but otherwise it's quite repetitive. So I can imagine after after a few times coming here, it all of the hairpins just kind of meld into one. Although that left hairpin up ahead was uh, was very fun to try to get right consistently. So I'm definitely going to be back at some point. I don't know when. We'll see if we can maybe get into the into the 52s. I might have to go on a bit of a diet beforehand. Uh, maybe no rib protector, get my weight down to about 70 kilos, and then maybe we can squeeze out uh, a 52 in the process. But yeah, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. Our next karting adventures is going to be Club 100 at Hlandau. So that should be a banger, should be some good battles, and a very important championship fight between us and Harrison Kirkham to come as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Again, I hope you have enjoyed, and if you did, do drop us a like and subscribe for more karting actions as we show how to enter the pit lane without hitting the tyre barriers or the Lego bricks. But yeah, thanks again for tuning in guys and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.